The Brisbane Test match was one of the very best, indeed at 4.1 runs per over, it had the highest run rate of any Test match ever played in Australia. Channel 9 was so excited by it all, that during the news, they did a live cross from the Gabba to the Gabba. I'm joined live now by Neil Brand. Neil, what a victory for the Aussies today. Oh, it was an amazing victory, Yvonne. There's a tired old cliche in Australia that being Australian cricket captain is the second most important office in the land behind only the Prime Minister. I think Steve Smith has chosen correctly in going into cricket rather than politics. A couple of years ago, here's how he responded when asked who Australia's first Prime Minister was. Is it Bob Hawke? Bob Hawke? Smith is out by about 90 years. Hawke was actually Prime Minister when Smith was born. And it's not as though he's now slunk into history and become a figure of the distant past. Here's Bob Hawke a couple of years ago at the cricket when India were last here. Smith did have as captain and what a wonderful summer he's having with the bat. Here are his scores so far, making 375 runs so far at an average of 188. And how is this for a comparison? Here are the first four innings that none other than Don Bradman played in his only series against India. But for Smith to keep on going, matching Bradman will be tough because Bradman's final two innings in the series were 201 and 57 retired hurt for an overall average of 179 and a total aggregate of 715. That's the highest number of runs ever scored in an Australia-India series. The record for India is Dravid's 619 in 2003 and 2004. For another Australian, things are not looking so rosy. Poor old Sean Marsh, well, here are his, rec here are his scores against India prior to this series. Six innings, 17 runs at an average of under three. So even his 32 and 17 in this match were enough to nearly triple his total of career runs against India. As for Dhoni and India, quite simply, they threw this match away. When Australia only had four first innings wickets in hand and trailed by 161, India were in command. Then, bizarrely, they started sledging Mitchell Johnson and bowling bounces to him, prompting Shane Warne to make this extremely accurate prediction. He might just throw the bat here and get some runs very, very quickly. And then when he gets the ball in his hand, he might ruffle a few of these guys up too. Here's a pitch map of the balls that they bowled Johnson in this, at the start of his innings. Absolutely woeful. The classic scattergun approach. And then after allowing Australia to unexpectedly get a large first innings lead, India seemed more concerned about the state of the practice wickets and the food rather than batting. And Mitchell Johnson tore through them. And in the midst of the collapse, Dhoni played this shot to Hazelwood. Oh, that's a very close in there. Yes. He's gone as well. What was he doing about Stone? He's too early. This is Stone is his second ball. That's absolutely plum. Not sure what he's trying to do there, Dhoni. That's India in all sorts of disarray here. Australia all over him like a cheap suit. Dhoni's gone for a gauzer. Then, with Australia two down and looking nervous with the small run chase ahead, Dhoni for some reason allowed the world's worst slips fieldsman, Coley, to be in there, and this happened. Dropped! The flashing cut. Took the edge. They couldn't take the catch. He really shouldn't be in the slips, Coley. I've seen him drop so many catches. So Donny's come in for quite a lot of justifiable criticism. But don't write India off just yet. They could win the toss and bat in Melbourne, it could be very hard for Australia to win following that. And on spin-friendly Sydney, anything's possible. India could yet walk away with this, having unexpectedly retained the Border Gavaskar Trophy. Back to Channel 9 commentators. And Ian Healy, I know, annoys a lot of people. Doesn't annoy me, but a lot of viewers get very frustrated by him. Well, you'll be satisfied to know that his fellow Channel 9 commentators also find him irritating. Look at how um, Mark Nicholas barely manages to keep his temper under wraps during this live cross when Healy unexpectedly gets him to do some wicket keeping. How about you get your jacket off and I'll talk to you, I'll talk our youngsters through how to practice. Me? Yes. Well, I don't think I, uh, I, I had a ball here somewhere. I'm going to need a different mic then. 
So what, what, we're going, what we're going to be doing here, Nico, is, is the value of good practice as we are keeping too many coaches and too many keepers. But typically Ian Chappell made no efforts to conceal his annoyance when Healy implied that, his, that Ciappelli's career predated that of television. You talk about you wouldn't like to listen to commentary, but what, that sound of the projector must have been horrible as well. You know. Ian, you with us? I'm concentrating on the cricket, not the rubbish, uh, Hills. Finally, four quick points to finish. One, what is Duncan Fletcher doing? India bowled 16 no balls during this match, which is absolutely crazy given the scrutiny that are now on them. It's guaranteed that they're going to continue to take wickets on no balls if they continue to overstep. Not to mention that 16 extra runs may have been the difference between them winning and losing this match. The worst culprit is Is Ishant Sharma. Have a look at him here. Get their teeth right into this game, he needs to. That's a big no ball. It's miles over. I think he should be focusing more on his front foot than on the quality of the food that he's receiving. Two, it's time to change the LBW law. If the batsman is hit outside the line of the off stump and the ball was going on to hit the stumps, he should be out, regardless of whether or not he was playing a shot. This rule confuses so many fans, and in this day and age of batsman friendly wickets, it just needs to change. Have a look at this example here. Oh, that's an appeal worth while not out. Smith is correctly given not out, but surely it would be a better game if the rule made it that in this instance, where the ball was going to knock the stumps all over the place, that the batsman should be out. Three, Brad Haddon took six first innings catches in this match, prompting comparisons um, between him and the all-time great wicket keepers. What, what I think this shows is that wicket keeping statistics are absolutely pathetic. The catches that he took were all regulation. I'm sure all 11 of the Australians would have taken them, or possibly not Sean Marsh. Indeed, I would argue that Haddon had a poor game with the gloves because despite taking a number of regulation chances, he actually muffed a fairly straightforward run out here. I reckon Smith or Warner would have easily affected that run out. And yet nothing goes against Brad Haddon in the stats. And nothing goes for MS Dhoni in the stats for performing this excellent run out. Surely the time has come for a more sophisticated way of measuring how keepers are going. Fourth and lastly, the overrates in this test match were abysmal. On the first day, Australia only bowled 83 hours despite taking the extra half hour. So 83 overs took six and a half hours rather than the five and a half hours that they should have taken. Effectively, the poor viewing public who pay ludicrous amounts to go to test matches in Australia paid all that money to spend an extra hour seeing absolutely nothing. But in any case, this test match once again proved that cricket is the world's greatest sport and test cricket is the best form of cricket. Please follow me on Twitter at India in Oz and subscribe to my channel if you'd like. Thanks for watching.